Hey friends, it's Sandra. Welcome back to Creatively Sandra. Today, we're going to be working on a craft. I haven't done a craft video in a while, so I wanted to get one in. And I had been talking to you about doing some diamond painting. So that's what I want to show you today. I've been doing diamond painting for a couple of years and I do some large, kind of extensive projects that take quite a while to finish, you know, a month or two months, a uh, little bit at a time. And um, it can be very intimidating. I wanted to start you guys with a much simpler one, one that is easily available. I got at one of the local craft stores and pretty easy to get done in a short amount of time. Also, this kit that I'm gonna show you, you don't need any additional equipment to finish. So super simple and fun, and they have lots of um, Disney themed diamond art. So the first, this is what we're gonna do. It is a Minnie Mouse canvas, and I'll show you close up. Um, you'll see it when we face down as well and turn the camera. But this is a kit by Diamond Dots, which is a company. There are plenty of other diamond art, diamond painting suppliers. You can get them on Amazon, and I'll show you in part two, one of my favorite companies that I've been getting some Disney-themed, not licensed, um, art from, and those are bigger. But let's get started with a smaller project that's easy to get started with. We'll remove all the intimidation, and I'll show you exactly what you need to do. Let's get started with unboxing our kit. So this is the Minnie Mouse kit that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. And this is available in many of the craft stores and online. And this is a rather easy one, um, not the smallest, but it's easy because it is not a full drill, what they call a full drill of diamond area. So you see from this, the background here that is white does not get drills. And by drills, I mean the small beads that we'll be applying. And you'll see that as I come in um, with the item. So anywhere there's this pink on the higher or the larger picture, um, no drills there. So let's go ahead and unbox and see what's in here. I only opened the um, tape, cut the tape so we could get in the box easily. And that is it for the contents. So we'll set that aside for a moment. So we're gonna go through, these are called the drills or the diamonds. We'll go through that in a moment. Let's first open up our canvas. And so it always comes rolled in the box, usually regardless of the size, but larger canvases will have a larger box, obviously. So this you can see is about, I think it's a 12 by 12. And so hopefully it'll fit in a frame really nicely as well. So don't worry that this is folded and rolled. That will work out and it is covered in plastic. And the reason that is, is because underneath where you put your diamonds is sticky. So it's covered with plastic so that that uh, stick doesn't get dust and things attached to it or stick to itself when it's rolled. And you'll notice that this part where I mentioned doesn't get drills is not sticky. And if I peel back a little bit, you can see that where the numbers and symbols are, are sticky. So I'm going to just take this and roll it the other direction for a moment on that piece and then roll the whole thing. And that'll just help us have it a little bit flatter to work with to start but it'll all work out as you put your diamonds down you can always put heavy object on it to flatten if you need to but really you don't even need to so again they're going to show you on here what is the diamond area so this picture shows the pink and the pink part is where the diamonds are not okay the design size oh it's an eight 7 by 8.7 inch so smaller than a 12 by 12 that's even better that means it'll be quicker for us so the other thing on here that's important is the symbols let me take some of the plastic off of that so this is what we'll be getting for diamonds um a01 through a13 that means we have 13 colors if all the numbers are there and each 
uh, serial number has a grid sign and that will equate to where those diamonds go on the pattern. So you'll notice in A01, it's a white circle with a slash. And so over here, you'll see white circles with a slash and that's where we will place the A01 diamonds. They also have a diamond dots number. And when we open up the packages of diamonds, you'll see where that may be applicable. And oftentimes different companies use different ways to have a, a number versus a symbol versus the diamond dots number, et cetera, but they're all coordinated with the image itself. And then in our package of supplies, let me move this out of the way for a moment. There's several things in here. Let's see how we open it. So first of all is our actual diamonds, the drills. And those come in these small packages and they are labeled, I got a little bit of a glare there, but they are labeled with that serial number and the diamond dots number. So you'll know which one, this is the A018411 and that goes with A018411, the um, slash in a white circle symbol. Okay, and they'll give you enough for each color that you have. Sometimes if there's a color that's really has a lot, you'll get multiple package and you'll see like the black has much more in it than this blue, for example. And that's based on how much the color is used in the package. And sometimes you'll get a long strip like this and maybe another small strip. Some of these are, have, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the video, but have a little bit of an iridescent shine to them. So that's kind of fun. That'll make our picture beautiful. Okay, let me see if I can get less of a glare on here. Now the other supplies you will need come in this smaller package and they are a tray. So this is a tray that we'll, we will sort our diamonds in and pull our diamonds from as we're doing the painting. And then we have a diamond painting pen that's rolling away on me. So this is the diamond painting pen and it just has this open hold tip on it. And that's where our wax will go. And then it does come with a grip so that it's a little more comfortable for your hand. And we will try and slide that on. It's gonna be a little bugger, but we'll get it. And we'll slide it down to where it's comfortable for you to rest your, your fingers on. Okay, then you have additional tips for this. This tip is, it looks like a, uh, maybe a seven, it doesn't say on it, but there's times when you will want to place multiple diamonds at once, and these tips are used for that. So this is a single placing tip, this is a multi-placer tip. And then this is to use to line up the diamonds. So if you find your lines of diamonds are zigzag or getting a little out of whack, you can use this as a straightener to push them together. And both of these fit on top of, or sorry, in this end of the tool. So you can use it and keep this in here without having to change your tool. Um, and this will take wax in it, which will help us pick up our diamonds. And this end also takes wax. So speaking of that, the wax comes in this little container that we can keep the wax. It's a little diamond dots container. And they gave us one piece and that's, that's all we'll need for this project, like most likely. I'm just seeing if it's actually two there. Nope, it's one. And it does have a little plastic coating on it. You'll want to take that off before you try to pick up the wax. It's usually on both sides, and this one's a little bit stuck, but yeah, there's a plastic coating on this side as well. Okay, so we'll get to that. And then you do get some baggies, and this one looks like it gave us quite a few. That's the one thing I sometimes add to my uh, supplies. Literally, you have everything in this kit that you need to complete this project. These help because once you open these bags, there's no way to close them again. So it's good as you use the colors to transfer them into these mini Ziploc bags. And if you need extra, you can purchase those in any craft store. These are about a, probably a two and a half by 
three inch bag maybe, but any size will work and snack bags, if you have at home, those will work fine too. The only other supply I need to bring to the table is a scissors to cut the bags open and a Sharpie. When I transfer these colors to a smaller bag or a Ziploc bag, I wanna mark the bag so that I um, label it so that I remember what the symbol or the code is for the color that I put in that bag. Okay, let me spread this out and we will get started. So, um, I like to start usually in a corner, so either in a top corner or a bottom corner, because you'll want to peel back your plastic and not expose the whole project. If I lift this up, you have the tendency to get dust in there. If you drop something on it, it sticks. If you have pets in your home, it'll pick up the pet hair, the dust, things like that. So you only wanna reveal the area you're working in. There's lots of other ways to mark off areas that we can get into in a future video. Um, I wanna keep this one a little bit simple, but I will in the future show you some bare projects and some ways I section those off. So let me see, let me see if I can get rid of a little more glare. There we go. All right, so I'm going to start with this bottom corner. And the first color that I'm going to use is with the symbol that looks like a seven. So if you look closely on here, there is a seven and it's A11 and symbol 8272. So that is going to be A11, which is here. 8272 and so I will there's a little tear strip in here so these easily tear apart but I'll end up cutting this open normally I just cut a little corner like I said I will do um, a transfer of this to the bag there's not that many of these so I think I'm just going to dump the whole thing in the tray for the first part of this and then when I move on to another color I will transfer these to the Ziploc bag one other thing, there are a lot of different ways to do this, and I have seen people that will work on a single color and finish all of that color. But because of the things I explained about the stickiness, I do not want to finish a color. I want to finish more of a section, and so I will be swapping bags in and out. Okay, sorry about the plastic. It's going to give us um, keep kind of a bit of a glare there. So I'm gonna dump all of these into the tray. There's a little method to get these turned right side up. So if you look at the diamonds, there is a, a right side and a wrong side. So the right side up is a faceted piece. So it has a kind of a shimmer because it's got little cuts in it. And then the wrong side is a flat side and the flat side is what's going to go down directly on our picture so those are flat so what i want to do is get as many as i can right side up and i do that with a little bit of shake so i just take and move my wrist a little bit to shake these out what happens is they fall in the cracks of um or the grooves that are in this tray and then i just kind of bump those down and how this helps is if you are using the multi-placer, you'll be able to pick up multiple uh, diamonds at once with the multi-placer. And the fact that they're in these lines helps a lot. So if you have some strays, that's okay. We're going to start with just the single placer. We'll advance to the multi-placer later. So starting with the single placer, we're going to get ready. We'll get the placer itself ready, the tool. So again, we're gonna go into that wax. I'm gonna peel one side off and keep it off because I have a cover for my wax. And the wax lasts a long time and, and doesn't really go bad, so this is fine. I'll be able to cover it up as needed. So what I need to do is press my tip of my diamond tool into the wax. And what that does is fills that little cavity with wax. Now, all I had to do, this is a nice thick one. You'll see some that are thinner, but because it's so thick, it actually filled right to the top. And then to the touch, it's fine. It's not very sticky, but it is sticky enough that it will, and you can barely see, you can't even see really 
the wax in there if I turn it sideways, but it's in there, the pink wax is in there, and that's what's going to stick to our diamonds. All right, what I'm gonna do is zoom in a little bit closer, and then I'll show you how the placement works. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're gonna start with the corner. We're using the number seven symbol, so that's a green square with a seven in the middle of it. And it's a good idea to take a look at all of the symbols before you start and just make sure there's none that are difficult to tell one from the other. Something like this um, negative sign and the slash mark maybe are close, but they're different colors. So you can't see it very well here, but it's a little bit yellow. You'll see that over here and the white ones are very white, white. Okay, so let's just pull up the corner and get started. So again, I have wax in my tool. And now I'm just gonna go in and straight on pick up one of the diamonds. And so you'll see that I was able to easily pick that up. It sticks, but it's not so sticky, it won't come off. And then this surface is sticky so that it will sit right on there and stay. Okay, so that's just one diamond. I'm gonna pick up another and place next to it. I'm gonna pick up another and place next to it. And you're just gonna keep going. And we'll fill in this color at the bottom here. Now I said I work in sections and I switch colors a lot because I wanna stay in this bottom corner section and that's a personal preference. I do that so again, my sticky area doesn't get dirty by me exposing the whole thing. There's also different things you can use to hold down this plastic here. They have, um, I think it's like, a started out as a sewing tool, but it's a magnet that you can get that holds underneath the, um, the mat here, the canvas, and above it. And so it'll hold back your sticky canvas, your sticky layer there, or sorry, your clear layer, I should say. Okay, so I'm just filling in all of the number sevens here. And there's nothing in between them, so this is going pretty easy and straightforward. And then it's a small space, so I'm gonna do the other sevens here and that will complete those. So I'm just trying to keep my little diamonds lined up on those sevens. And as you fill in more, some of them will push others. If it's not lined up to your liking, then you can, like I said, use that straightener tool. Okay, and that's it. We're just gonna keep going. I am going to just speed up and you'll see some of this, but this is, and we'll stop at some point and do a little bit of the um, multi-placing. Actually, let's do that right now. So as I mentioned, to switch colors, I'm going to take one of the baggies that came with it, and we'll move that aside for a sec. I'm going to use the symbol or at least the uh, serial number, which was A11. And I'm also gonna put the diamond dots number, which is 8272. And then I will dump so that I have easy access to them the next time. And the great part about these trays is they have a bit of a funnel. And so you can easily pour into the bag. And we'll just set that aside for when we need to do more sevens later, if we need to do more sevens. And I did, um, I could have done the rest of those, but I wanna show you the multi-placing before we move on to anything else. So um, the next color that we're going to do is the equal sign, and it's kind of in a reddish pink square, and it is number four and 8064. So I'm gonna grab that. I'm just cutting off camera, just cutting that piece out of the long strip. And here it is. I want to pull a few out to show you. So we will pour some into the tray. I'm gonna set that aside for a moment. And again, do the method where we shake our wrist a little bit to get those lined up in some of the channels of the tray. I dropped a couple there. Okay, and then for the multi-placer tip, we're gonna do the same thing we did with the other tip. 
and use our wax. But this time we're going to fill the whole tip of this. So we will just press the whole tip into there. Let's see if it behaves. I'm taking it out just so I can push a little bit. It's kind of sticking in there, but eventually I do get the whole piece out of the wax and into the tool. And I can just press with my thumb, make sure that's good and firm in there and not too much sticking up. Sometimes if you have, depending on the kind of wax you use, if there's a lot sticking out, it'll stick to your diamonds when you put the first few down. And this wax, you will need more, but you can go quite a ways with the little bit we've put in that tip and the lot of it we've put here before we will need to refill on wax. Okay, so let's do an example of multi-placing. So I'm just going to take the, let's move this over a little bit. I'm gonna take the tool and line it up with one of my rows of diamonds here. And usually what I do is I press down on one side and then bring the other side down. So kind of a, like a heel to toe movement, heel to toe. And I'm gonna do that in the tray on top of the diamonds. Now, I couldn't tell exactly what size this multi-placer is, but you will see from me pressing that I've picked up six diamonds. If you can see that very well, but six diamonds are on there now. So now I would go to a space that can take six diamonds. So for example, here next to our sevens we put down, the equal symbol is here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know I can fill that space. I'm gonna have one additional that I'll need to lay down. But again, I'm gonna do the same thing and go heel to toe on placing those. Oops, and I didn't quite get it. So I'm gonna straighten these out and I'm just using my tip of my single placer to move those into place. So you can kind of slide them over. It's very tacky, so it's not gonna just slide really easily. I'm doing a little bit of pressure to move those into the right place. And so that was to show you that mistakes can be made. <laughs> I did not succeed in putting that one down right away. So it does take a little practice sometimes, and this is a brand new tool for me. I use different ones that I've purchased separately um, that I've gotten used to, but you know, trying to show what comes in the package, it will work. So again, I've pressed down. If they're not all sticking in the way that I want, like one's a little off, I can press down on a flat part of the tray and kind of move them all into the correct place. So we'll try this again. I will do again a heel to toe method where I take the, the one on the end and line that up and then bring the rest of the tool down to line up on the other circles. And so this one will line up much better. And so perfect, those are in. And again, if you needed to adjust them, you can just slide them slightly with the single tip end. Okay, I'm gonna continue and you'll see me complete some of this and then we'll come back when it's finished up. I wanted to pause here to show you what I've been doing because I realize I've been doing it a lot and you may have seen it but not understand what I, what exactly I'm doing. So remember I said that the uh, multi-placer tool is picking up six diamonds at a time. Well, it doesn't have to pick up six diamonds at a time. So if I have a place that's only two diamonds or three diamonds, four diamonds, I can still use my multi-placer tool and just pick up the amount I want. Now, they still need to be close together in the tray because you want, when you pick them up, for them to place down the same way. But what I do is, let's say for this space, I only need three, so I'll kind of count off three there and place my tool so that it picks up three beads, diamonds, whatever. And then I can place those down and they just fit right in. 
So the next space is two, I can pick up two and place those down as well. So I can go up to six, but I don't have to always use the full length of the multi-placer. These do come in different sizes. This is just the one that comes with my kit. Um, and in my more extensive supplies for other kits, I have multi ones and I have multi tools themselves so that I'm not changing them out. But again, you can always go smaller. You can't go more than six, but you can go down and that helps you to make the placing faster. we just check to make sure we haven't missed any beads. I like to run my hand over, make sure nothing is loose and coming up and make sure we've not missed any spots. I've got a few stragglers here from a dump I did accidentally. And other than that, it is done. All right, so what do you think? This is a new day. I did finish this though in one sitting. It took me several hours. I had a Sunday that I just had nothing else going on. So I sat and did diamond dots because I find it very relaxing and you can turn on your movies. You can listen to a audiobook and just um, have fun with it. This project, like I said, was small. It's a great one to start with. There are even smaller kits in the stores that do a kind of refrigerator magnet size, a little pillow, even some keychains. So you certainly could try those first. One thing I did not mention when we unboxed, and I didn't even realize it was in there, is there are instructions in the kit. Um, watching my video, we covered it all. So um, you certainly can use this and refer to it, but if you watch the video, you know what to do. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll give it a try. Diamond Dots is beautiful. Um, there's so many great patterns out there and we will do a part two, part B, something like that, where I'll show you some of the larger art pieces I've completed. And there's some great artists out there that do Disney likenesses, not necessarily licensed Disney. There are some licensed Disney ones as well beyond this um, one from Diamond Dots, but Lots of fun, lots of um, different scenes, Disney and not out there. So give it a try. Let me know if you try it. I'd love to see your results. And um, if you already are doing Diamond Dots and love it, give me a shout out too in the comments below. Go ahead and subscribe so you see that part too. And we'll see you then.